In this video, we're going to focus on the JavaScript on click with data attributes and text. And this one will be slightly more advanced. And we're going to base it off our previous video where we already explained on how to create the on click functionality here. If you click on these items, it changes in color. So as I indicated in the previous video, imagine you have this seat selector in the airline. You can select this. What is very common then is what will happen is that when we select a certain item, it will change in text as well. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you select here, a get coffee, it will convert into an X. Well, probably more better is if I would change this text into, let's say, this is like the row 1A, and then we have here another row, this would be uh, 2A, and then this one would be 3A. So if I save this now and refresh, we select this, there you are. So this is very useful. So, of course, what we want to do here now is a bit more advanced because right now we only have this here. So let's start to play around with the text. How would we be able to change the text? The most basic way you will say is just doing this. So we just say here we have the item, item dot inner text equals, and then we say your X. So if we save this here now, do this. Oh, sorry. Then we get here the X, as you can see here. And this is, uh, of course, phenomenal, except that it, it doesn't see the red here. However, that one can be another condition. We can do an if statement for that. But you can imagine this. This is the biggest issue. If I click on this and then click on that, what I want to do is I want to toggle this, basically. Or at least I want, if I click on it and I click on again on it, I want to make sure that this value here goes back to 2A. And most people, they usually look around in the airline and try to select the one you, uh, they prefer, but usually they will select one or two different options. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to then get the text back. But how do we do the text if you overwrite it like this? Well, the answer for that is as well into the data items or the data sets or the data attributes. What we can do here is basically add another data attribute. And we can say this will be data. And let's give this, we will say, uh, seed number. And this seed number equals 1A. And then we can just copy this, put it in here, and put it in there. And then we can say here, this is 3A, and this is 2A. So if I save this now, refresh, now it still works the same. However, what we did is we have this here always in memory, meaning that if you want to redo this, for example, we're going to click again on it, in that very moment, we, wa we want to put it back into its original state. So how can we do this? Well, you can see here, what we can do is the following. We're going to do an if statement on here. So this is equals done. And then what we can do here is an if statement. So we're going to say here's the following. Because we can maintain this one here. If, uh, let's see here, item status. Let's say if this item status equals is equals done in that case what i want to do is i want to convert this back into another item status which would be maybe the pending then we will say this will be pending that's the first thing we're going to set we will set this back to pending secondly what i want to set here is as well the item status or sorry not the item status the seat number so we say here item dot data set uh, was it the number that will be seat number with capital N. So this will be fine, but then we have to do here the following. This in our HTML will be equal to what exactly? Well, our data set here with the seat number. So the moment we do this, we should now convert it back if it has been clicked. So if I save this, refresh, then you can see here, if I click on this, oh, uh, there you are. All right, so I realized I did something wrong in my if statement. You can see here, this is this. Uh, if All right, so let's see how we can do this properly because we're very close to it. So we just have this one here. We can probably do else this. So that should be it. And the reason why, what happened is it was always set to done and then always to X. And then of course it will put it back immediately. So that doesn't make any sense, of course. 
So now if I save this, refresh, if I click on this, it's an X, and then if I click again on it, it goes back into its original state. Of course, you can see that the colors change as well. For that, you can make a different if statement, and you can, you, you can build the logic around it. The most important thing here, what I want to point out, is that when we selected a certain seat, we are still able to retrieve the original seat number here back, and that's this. And of course, what we could do here as well, uh, if pending is done, we can do here maybe an alert. Alert, and then we say here, you have selected seat number, and here, we just do concatenate space, and then we do here plus, and what we can do here is just to grab here the seat number text, and the seat number text would be this item here, put it there. So if I save this now, refresh, go here, all right, so this is A, and now it will only show the moment we have selected it as an X. So we click here, we have selected to A, if we confirm this, it becomes an X. And here's same as well, there you are. But if we already selected it and we want to unselect it, by clicking again on it, it will just show us the seat number without that we selected it because it's back to yellow. And that's basically the usefulness of the data items, or not even the data items, it's the data attributes or the data sets in JavaScript.